go to now and we're going to start looking into a little bit more advanced stuff we're going to be looking today at movement so how we can make our shapes animate and uh, make the animation more than a still picture so if I click on one of my shapes um, we can see that it it has yeah if I click on it actually properly this time you can see that there is that it's selected and it highlights down here so what I've got is what's called a shape layer, and that's just what After Effects calls shapes that have been made within the program. If I go into the contents, I can see that there is a path, which is the line that's been drawn there, and that's a vector image. So you've got your points and it's curving, and as we know, a vector image will not pixelate, so that might be really good. We can blow it up or make it small as we need. I've got my stroke, and I could go in there and I could change it to be all sorts of things. I could, let's see what Darken does. Okay, so they all add little effects to it. Um, I'm not gonna use that for now. I could go into Fill. I could, let's see what that does. Um, it might give you some cool effects, but it's really trial and error um, until you know what each does exactly. And to be honest, I don't know what they all do. Um, if we go down into this one though, Transform, it becomes more interesting. So what we've got here is um, a whole bunch of little stopwatches and next to them some information about what they might change over time. So what we can do is we can say, I'm going to move this circle over so it hits the square and I'm going to do it over three seconds. So the, what I'd be moving there would be the position. So I go in and I tap next to position and you'll notice that there's a blue triangle there or blue diamond sorry and then on my timeline I've also got a blue diamond and if I zoom in you can see individual frames and maybe I zoomed in a little bit too close but I can see at frame zero I've got a diamond showing the position at 666314 so if I go ahead and I say okay in let's say about two seconds. I want my character to go left across the screen until it hits the square. All I need to do is drag it. And so if I hold down shift while I drag it, it'll travel in, in a straight line. Or if I don't, I could have it going in whatever direction, sort of still in a straight line, but it won't lock to those 90 degrees. So I'm gonna have it go straight in there. And at that second there, I'm gonna have it hit. So now, if I go there and I go space, it's maybe a little bit slow, right? So we can take that anchor point and move it in. So that's called, sorry, not an anchor point, that's called a keyframe. So these little dots here are called keyframes. And basically they say at point zero frames, I'm going to put a keyframe in. Now at point... 16 or is it 17 it's it's 17 at the 17th frame i'm going to put in another position keyframe and at that point the computer's going to check that it's moved from that 666 point to 168 so if we go back through you can see it's increasing and decreasing and these in between frames where it's making a movement but we haven't put anything definite in are called tweens so we have two new terms we have keyframes and we have tweens. So if we do this movement and it plays, I still think that's a bit too, bit too slow. So if we put it in, let's say that, that will do. But it kind of just starts and goes very, um, there's not a velocity change. And if you think, if you wanted it to move realistically, it might slow, it might start off slow and then go if you know what I mean like you start and then you um, and then you run a little bit faster so what we could do is we could use uh, a key, the keyframe assistant and we could go easy ease in or easy ease out so let's click on this first one and I'm going to go easy ease and that gives me a it gives me kind of it's very subtle but it slows and then it speeds up automatically. Now you may not be able to see it, but it's nice and smooth. Um, but it's, 
it's these little it's these little bits that gets you the, the extra marks. You know, just adding in those little things and it's simply as easy as just right clicking on it and changing it to easy, easy, no easy, easy. I don't steam, just pressing F9. Um, okay, so that's all well and good. That's basic movement and it's all the same. Any movement of any object in any of your animations is going to be done exactly that way by choosing an end point and by choosing a start point. Now, you can do straight lines or you can use, see these little larger circles here? You can pull in a handle like this to make it so it's now a curved path. I could go and say, all right, I think I would like my circle to bounce. So then I could add in a, another position point here. So I could add in another keyframe. And I could go and say, I want it to go like that. And then it'll kind of bounce in now. And I mean, it's not the smoothest animation, but it's just a tutorial, so that's okay. Um, I could have it flying around the screen if I wanted. The other, all I would have to do to do that is just um, really get in here and start doing some crazy movements of this movement line. So I could go, yep, I want it going crazy. At this point, I want to pull this handle out further. I want it to go start like that. And then we get some weird stuff happening there. So I don't want to keep that. I liked how it was before when it just kind of bounced and bumped into it, okay? So we can look at that and that's fun. And we can also, um, change a lot of things about the circle by going into these contents and transform. We could spin it round using rotation, although there's not really much point because it's a circle, you won't see it. But if we went to the square and we did rotation, a keyframe for rotation and moved it to an end point and we say, I want it to rotate 15 times as an example, then all of this, okay then it should rotate around a central point. But it doesn't always work perfectly. And here's an issue that we've come up to, which is great because it lets me show a step that I actually missed. So when we look at the rotation, it's actually rotating around this center point here or anchor point. So what we need to do is we need to change where that anchor point is and move that anchor point to the center of the square. So all we do with that, we don't need to put a keyframe in because we're not looking to change between two values. We're looking to move it from the very start. So we can go in with our mouse and get it to go right into the center of the circle. And then hopefully it should rotate, but it's been, it's being strange still. Okay. <laughs> My apologies, everyone. Let's have a look and see what I can do here. Okay, so we've got a rotation. So maybe it's rotating too many times. Let's see, if I just put it to 90 degrees and then there we go, yeah. It was rotating too fast. So sometimes we might think, okay, I'm going to do three rotations in three seconds. But if you think about it, that means that the computer has to go through about 900 degrees of turning and it just can't do it. Um, so sometimes a slower animation may be better than a faster animation. So we've gone through that. We've had it hit each other. We've had our circle hit. So what if instead, oh, what if instead of having the square spin from the start, the square spins to almost kick the ball. So the ball comes in and the moment it hits, we can move these points. So it starts to rotate. And then at the point of impact, we go back to the position um, anchor point from before and we go and really knock it out of the park really quick so let's see if that looks so bang bang okay let's see how that looks and I'm kind of happy with that but it didn't fall completely off screen so it just kind of stands awkwardly so let's pull it right off okay so now bang and it's gone it's a simple animation, but if you are looking to make a square in a circle where a circle is a soccer ball, it kind of works well. One last thing before we go, I'm going to show you how to change color of your shapes in the middle of your animation. 
So I'm going to do it with the square. So the square here, if we go down to the contents of the shape layer, you'll see the fill bar. And we can go and say, I'm going to put in a keyframe for color. And then I'm going to move across a few frames, put in another keyframe, and I'm going to change the color to blue. Now, over time, it's going to morph from color to color. And I can do that as many times as I want by putting in other keyframes, um, doing whatever I want. So you can see it's morphing. You may be able to use that for something. I could put in the stroke and I could change the stroke width over time. So I could go, all right, I want the stroke of this to go small and then go much, much wider when it kicks the ball. Fairly simple. Um, and really it just keeps going. I can change any number of things and then I can put them all away by pressing the T key twice. Is it T? It should be. Yep, it's T. So you tap T a couple times and it goes and is very neat. And yeah, have a go. Mess around with it. There's no real right or wrong answers at this point. If you have simple shapes, you can do a lot more with them than if you incorporated something from Illustrator or Photoshop. But the downside of that is your shapes will be really simple. So it might be better to just either draw your shapes, move them into Photoshop and bring them in and just move them around in this program. Or you might like to see what you can do with these basic shapes. It's up to you. It's your animation. Um, have a go and show me what you can do in class. Anyway, thanks very much for your time.